Mike Ferguson, I'm the mayor of the village of Fredonia. We want to welcome you and we want to welcome those who are watching via live stream tonight. Um, hope you enjoyed spring. Okay, comedy show is Friday night, by the way, so you can come back for that. Uh, we do want to thank um, the Opera House for doing this tonight. They, they have a full slate of entertainment and great programming throughout the month. This was kind of an extra, uh, but we thought that it was important to, uh, to have this out here tonight. So there's nothing more important in a community than the safety of its residents. And there are many elements of a community, of a village, of a city and a town that sometimes are overlooked and wrongly so. Because nothing is more important than the men and women who fill the ranks of our fire and our police department. And we are happy to have with us tonight Chief Dave Price of the Fredonia Police Department. Dave, you want to wave? There he is. Applause is fine. Um, and we also have Dan Aldridge, Captain of the Fredonia Fire Department. Chief Ortolano from the Volunteer Program of the Fire Department. And Chief of the Fredonia Fire Department, Josh Myers, who is going to be doing the presentation tonight. And I realize that it's a, it's a little bit of a small crowd tonight, but if you wouldn't mind, uh, if we could have the members of the Fredonia Fire Department and Police Department that are here tonight, to please stand for both the live stream and the folks here tonight so we can thank you for your service to the community. So an event that we won't see again in 125 years. I don't know about you, but I'm hoping I'll be here, but I doubt that that's going to happen. So it's very, very important, and I want to thank Chief Myers and Chief Price for the time that they have put into this and his team. Um, they are coordinating this effort throughout the entire county, and he'll be doing the same presentation in Gowanda um, in just a couple of days. So it's a very exciting thing to come to our community. We hope that our businesses can also benefit from the visitors that we expect, and uh, we just enjoy you being here this evening. So without further ado, uh, please welcome Chief Josh Myers and Chief Dave Price of the Fredonia Fire Department and the Fredonia Police Department. Thank you. So normally when I speak, I walk around, so this is going to be very awkward for me trying to stay put. I'm told I have to because we're live streaming this. So uh, what we have here tonight is not a massive PowerPoint. There's probably only 16 slides total, and about half of those are pictures. Um, so we really don't have too, too much to talk about other than what, what we're doing uh, to ensure that the public is safe uh, and then what, uh, what recommendations that, that we want to make tonight, right? We're going to make recommendations. You guys will make decisions. Um, so we'll just share a few things. We'll talk about how you can protect your eyes as well, right? So our, our motto here, right, our thought process is, is we would rather be overprepared and underwhelmed uh, than underprepared and overwhelmed, right? So we don't know what, we don't know what April 8th is going to bring. What, what we're doing is we're studying the after-action reports from 2017 and prior events of what conspired in other municipalities and what they learned and what they were not prepared for, and that's how we're preparing. Um, so it could all go as planned or something could happen that we didn't even think of. So you have to kind of work with us and, and, and get through it together. So these are some pictures here. We're going to have a couple other pictures of the actual path of totality, right, with the eclipse. My disclaimer is I'm not a scientist. None of the gentlemen up here with me are scientists. We don't study stars. Uh, Chief Price puts away bad folks, and I put wet stuff on red stuff, right? So those are our, our expertise. So we're going to do the best we can with the eclipse itself. But uh, those are some pictures there. You can see top right is really the path of totality when it's in relation to our, our area in western New York. So some assumptions about the event, right? This is gathered and prepared through multiple county meetings that we've all attended. Um, so the preliminary... Um, thoughts, right, is this is going to be a five-day event, which I do agree with. Uh, it's going to be April 5th through the 9th, right? Folks are going to come into our, our area ahead of the event. They're going to make it a weekend. If they don't already have a hotel, it's too late, right? All of the hotels are already booked. All the RV sites are already booked. 
Um, if you can find an Airbnb, they're going for a lot of money. So uh, that kind of tells you a little bit about how this event is headed and people are ramping up. So uh, folks are going to come in early and they're going to leave late. They're going to make a, make a five-day event out of it. Um, this is coming from the county level. You know, Chautauqua County could see an influx, and that's a pretty big range of 50,000 to 250,000. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway, you know, from, from our position is we're going to see a lot of people coming through our area, right, on, on Route 5 or the 90 uh, corridor. They're going to be coming through our area, potentially getting off, potentially not getting off, but that's what we're going to see a lot of. Uh, there you can see possibility of a million travelers through the county. If you've been paying attention to the news, you know, Niagara Falls is the number one um, event, the go-to event for this, or, or location, excuse me, for this is solar eclipse. So that means a lot of you know, states to our west are going to be traveling right through our area to get to Niagara Falls. Uh, everything's sold out. Uh, you know, many observers will travel without lodging, right? This is going to be weather dependent, right? So what, why we put this on this slide is um, if it's going to be cloudy, 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 and then the day before the weather changes and nope, now it's going to be 100% clear, we're going to see a lot of people traveling to our area or other areas that aren't prepared, right? They're going to make a uh, an impromptu decision of, hey, I'm going to go to Chautauqua County, and they don't have a plan to, you know, where they're going to stay. They might be low on fuel, so that's when we're going to see kind of things go south uh, for those individuals. Uh, a lot of events going on in the area. We'll talk about that in a few minutes later in the slideshow. Uh, and then the bottom, I kind of already mentioned, the Eclipse Chasers. So this is just another picture of it, the path of the uh, 2024 Eclipse. Okay, these are some times that we're going to be seeing. It's going to start down in Dallas, Texas, around 140. And this is, this is total darkness, right? This is your, your path of total totality. Uh, for our area, you know, we're looking at uh, about 317, later 316 in the afternoon is when we're going to have total darkness. Um, so obviously it's going to be just like a, a sunset and a sunrise, right? It's going to start getting dark, then it's going to have total darkness. It's going to last about 3 minutes and 20 seconds, 3 minutes, 16 seconds for our immediate area. Um, and then the sun will start coming back out. The moon will move out of its way. So uh, that's our timeline, you know, 3, 3, 16, 3, 17 in the afternoon. This is just another look so you can really see how widespread this is. That blue line represents the, the path of totality, so it's going right over the lake. Uh, you know, we, uh, as a fire department, we only cover a small section of the lake. Uh, but, you know, there is going to be a lot of activity on that lake, if you, if you ask me. I think we're going to see a lot of boats out there and stuff like that. Uh, so some recommendations to our residents. Uh, so our, our best advice is to treat this as a winter storm, right? Fuel up your cars on Thursday or Friday, get some prescriptions, uh, get some groceries, your household items, just, just brace like there's a big storm coming to the area Saturday or Sunday. Uh, what we don't want is we don't want you to wait to get your prescription until Sunday or, or Saturday, and now we have an influx of visitors, and now you can't get your prescription, right? So take care of yourself first. Uh, just, just plan like it would be a storm. Uh, viewing options from home, right? This is my favorite. Tailgate from home, right? If you can stay home and you can have a party at your house with your family to view this, then that's our, our best uh, suggestion, right? That's fewer vehicles on the road, and that's less congestion, right? That is obviously our number one concern is congestion on the road. Um, you know, we as, as emergency responders, police, fire, EMS, we need to get where we're going. So congestion on the road is a bad thing for us. Uh, you know, there, I, I attended an emergency management meeting yesterday, and this was the first time I heard it, so we threw it on here, was um, that there was a lot of concern and a lot of conversations about animals, right? The animals are going to be confused, right? It's now dark at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. What's going to happen? So companion animals, are, you know, the, the, the st long short story is there's really no concern with companion animals. Uh, my dog doesn't care if it's light out or if it's dark out. Um, uh, the wild animals, sure, they might get confused, right? Some nocturnal animals might come out when they're not supposed to, but it's only going to be dark for three and a half minutes. So hopefully they're going to go back away. So uh, it might sound silly, but our, our biggest concern is just stay away from wild animals, right? I, I hope we do that anyways, but that would be our largest concern uh, with animals. Uh, pedestrian traffic, right, just, just take in mind, if, you know, especially during the eclipse, folks are going to be walking around. One, they're going to be walking around with those very dark sunglasses on, so they're not going to be able to see, you know, normal as it is, but they're probably going to be looking up at the sky. Uh, so they probably are not going to be looking for our vehicles. So just, you know, a little extra time, 
paying attention to that. Uh, over communicate the need for glasses to our youth. This is important, right? They're not going to understand the severity of it. Uh, they're going to want to take them off. They potentially could break those, you know, those disposable glasses. So uh, that, that's our biggest thing. We have plenty of glasses here. Uh, I, I'm not asking you to take 100 pairs for your household, but if you have four people, grab eight pairs. You're not going to take away from anyone else. The county has plenty, plenty, plenty of glasses. We're not going to run out. So, uh, you know, really over communicate that, make sure our, our children are all set. Uh, that would be another recommendation from us. And then have a plan. Um, you know, this casually exploring of, hey, let's go find something to do. Let's go find somewhere to park. This isn't going to be the day for it, right? We want to be, uh, have a plan, figure out where you're going to go for the day. Uh, if, if you can stay home, then we really recommend that. Uh, so the next couple slides are going to be some safety concerns. I'm going to turn the microphone over to Captain Aldridge to talk about that. Good evening, evening, everybody. Um, Chief Myers has asked me to, to touch real quick on just a few um, safety con considerations, medical considerations. I'm, I'm primarily going to focus on um, you know, what's called retinopathy or eye damage by looking at the sun. So <clears throat> general concerns, is, as Chief said already, um, one of the biggest things we're looking at is just the increase of people in the area. Um, you know, the, the path of totality is a, a, a fairly narrow zone in the country and it's going to probably bring people from both directions into our area. So we're, uh, we're just, generally speaking, the influx of those people in the area, we're going we're gonna to have people falling, tripping, just your general lacerations, um, just for the added traffic in the area. Um, as I mentioned, solar retinopathy, it's a big word. Basically, um, I don't know if there's any ophthalmologists in the room or not, but retinopathy is basically just a disease or injury to the retina in the, in the eye. Um, in the back of the eye is your retina, and what happens during um, when light hits your lens in the front of your eye, it directs that light to the, the posterior the eye, the back of the eye, into an area which what's called the macula. And that, that focus of light, think of a laser going right to the back of your eye and that's what actually burns your retina. So a big fancy word, retinopathy, um, it's basically just damage to the retina from that, that focused intense uh, UV light. Um, common sense says, how do we prevent it? How do we avoid it? We don't look at the sun, and that's why we have the glasses um, to hand out to everyone. Um, some, some general populations that are at, at a higher risk for this retinopathy would be uh, the very young, the very old, any, any diabetics, um, anybody with hypertension or cataracts, cataracts or cataract repair in the past. Um, so those folks especially make sure the glasses are on um, and we obviously don't want to look at the sun anytime but people you know just for a second they think they can take just a real quick glance at the sun and, and it's really no amount of time is safe so that's why we're stressing uh, the use of the glasses um, during totality that that is when the when the sun is completely occluded that is when you can take those glasses off and observe the, the eclipse. But as soon as you see any type of light coming back is, is when you want to put the glasses back on. Um, there really is no treatment for retinopathy. Prevention is the, the best way to, uh, to avoid it. Um, just a couple of quick numbers in the, in the eclipse of 2017. There were over 100 documented cases of, of solar retinopathy. And th those are just the cases that, that sought medical treatment. So uh, most, estimate, most estimates are in the thousands, but those 100 cases were actually seen by um, medical professionals. 10% uh, of those cases, it was, it was actually permanent damage. So safe viewing. Um, I know we're handing out glasses, they're, they're everywhere, but any glasses you, you do use should have this, this ISO number. It's 12312-2. Um, ours are 
meet that requirement, but if, you know, if you get any off-brand or your kids or family come home with a pair, just make sure you're double-checking um, that it has this ISO number. Uh, these glasses are actually thousands of times darker than your traditional sunglasses. So if you think you're going to get away with wearing sunglasses or two pairs of glasses, it's just it's not going to work. Um, this next slide just, just talks about known events in our immediate area. Uh, the county has been great. The, the Visitors Bureau um, adds these sites to their website on a daily basis, and you can check check out all these locations on their on their website, Tour Chautauqua. Uh, SUNY Fredonia is having an event from 9 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Um, and as these events come in, the county is, is adding them. Um, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Chief Myers. Thank you, Captain Aldridge. Uh, so some event planning, right, in recognition of the eclipse, right, the eclipse itself isn't a threat, right? I think we all know that, right? Um, Captain Aldridge talked about some damage to our eyes and stuff like that, but it's not like the sun's going to fall out of the sky or anything like that, right? The, the, the threats and the, the conversations that we're having, you know, prior to this tonight and then, you know, leading up further to the event is really everything else is coming with it, the, the increased traffic, the increased population, the uh, mass gatherings, all that stuff. So that's kind of what we're doing. Hopefully we all know that. Um, so just some public safety concerns, right? Um, it, you know, it's really going to kind of mess up how we normally do things. Um, well, EMS call, right? Getting a patient to the hospital is, is going to be crazy. Um, the, the triage that the hospitals are going to have to do, right? The, the vehicle congestion that the PD is going to be dealing with, that's all stuff that we're really do, dealing with. The mass gathering areas, um, and with that comes everything that, you know, happens at mass gathering areas, right? We have medical concerns. We have... Um, uh, everything, assaults, cardiac emergencies, sun-related, everything like that. We don't know what the weather's going to be. Could be cold, could be hot, could be cloudy, could, you know, could not be. So we're really just kind of bracing for all, uh, all avenues of what we might be uh, uh, challenged with. Excuse me. Um, so stranded motorists is a big one, right? Uh, that was a big one out of the after-action review of, of prior eclipse of, you know what, I have a, tank of, a half a tank of gas, takes me two hours to get home, I'm all set, and then they're sitting in traffic for 12 hours. All right, so then now we have uh, stranded motorists, we have clogged roadways. Um, so if it's cold out, you triple that to now I'm cold, hyperthermic, so just a ton of stuff associated with that. Uh, we're going to have an increased 911 calls uh, you know, with, with both the county and, and the local police dispatch here. Um, as crazy as this sounds, there are going to be people out there that don't know this is happening. And they're going to call 911 at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, you know, the apocalypse is here, it's dark, right? And so it, it's going to happen, and we're going to see that, as crazy as that sounds. Um, you know, communication disruptions, we're going to see that. Cell phone towers are going to be overwhelmed, everything like that. Uh, let me rest assure you and calm you down that 911 calls do take priority, right? So if, if you do have to call 911, it's not gonna, you're not going to get a busy signal or anything like that. Uh, but we could see some, some communication problems with civilians and with first responders. And then increased drone, u drone usage. Uh, we're also going to see increased, you know, small aircraft usage. We're going to see aircraft trying to land in fields, right? Landing in a field in, in April, it's going to still be soft ground. So we have the potential for, you know, visitors coming from outside the area that aren't familiar, and they're going to they're going to have a plane wreck because they're thinking it's hard and it's not. So we're we're really trying to plan from the littlest thing to the the, the craziest thing we can imagine. Uh, so some things that we have done, right? So your, your public safety leaders in this area, right? We, we've been meeting, we've had multiple meetings, uh, both at the local level, the county level, the state level. Um, and, and, you know, that in, includes myself, Chief Price, uh, Scott, Scott Marsh is not here. Uh, really all the department heads have had meetings to kind of prepare for this. Um, we will be having an emergency operations center for our jurisdiction. What that means in layman terms is, uh, what we're doing here, right? How all the leadership are all together. That's what we're going to be doing during the event, right? So it's not a it's not a matter of hey, can we do this? We can just have a conversation. We're not trying to call each other. We can allocate resources as fast as we humanly can. Uh, we have you know multiple standbys going on. We're going to be providing the college SUNY Fredonia with fire and EMS standbys because their event could be 2,000 or it could be uh, 4,999 people. Uh, so we don't really know. So we're just going to brace for impact there. Uh, and then all hands are on deck for this event. Uh, we're bringing in as, as many people as we can to, uh, to keep you safe. Um, 
You want to speak now, Chief? Uh, good evening. These gentlemen have done a great job of informing you tonight. And that's the reason we're here. It's not to scare people. We're, we're going to bear witness to a once-in-a-lifetime event. And tonight was to give you ideas of what we're trying to plan for. And because we're bearing witness to a once-in-a-lifetime event, we're preparing for the unknown. So when we talk, it's trying to prepare people to make it a family day. Plan on being with your family, taking the time to enjoy that event in the safe confines of your home. Because we don't know how many people are going to be trying to traverse the roads and stop and witness it. That's why a lot of places have canceled work or school. It's to keep those individuals home safe. And tonight is to just kind of inform you. Um, the only thing I'd like to encourage you to do is remember, many of us in this little community, we leave our house and we know it takes us three minutes to get to Walmart. If you have to leave, give yourself time. It may take a little patience and plan knowing that it may take you longer to get somewhere, especially if you have to get someplace like the hospital or to a doctor's appointment. And secondly, um, we will have most of our staff geared up and working. But remember, not knowing what the traffic's going to be like, not knowing what the situations around the village are may take us a little time to get to where we're needed. So be a little patient. If somebody doesn't arrive promptly, give it a little time. And if they're not there, give us a call back. But I don't see any problems with that. But I just want you to think outside the box. But um, other than that, we're just asking. We're here because we want everybody to be safe. And I'll let Chief Myers close. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. So only two more slides, and then we're opening up. All right. So, you know, Chief Price already kind of mentioned this. Right. Our, our only goal here is to, is to keep you and, and our community safe. That's our only goal. That's the only thing we're doing today and the only thing we're going to do during the event. Uh, this event's a once-in-a-lifetime event, and we don't get a do-over. Right? It's not like we get to do this in 10 years. So it's not like we can say, oh, well, if we don't do it right this time, we'll try again in 10 years. This is our only shot. Right? So uh, we're, we're going to get through it together. Um, so now we're opening up to if there are any questions, uh, we're, we're answering the best we can. Um, there is a microphone, whether you want to use it or not, that's up to you guys. Um, but we're opening it up for any questions you might have. Chief, if you wouldn't mind explaining, uh, at first, the uh, Fredonia State event was a closed event, and they are going to have a closed event for recruitment purposes on the property. But they have opened up the opportunity for people that can't sit on their lawn and watch it because of trees or buildings that may be surrounding them. Is there a plan on where they're going to be able to go on that campus? I, I'm sure they're going to have signage, I guess, that would tell them where to go. Yeah, so, yeah, the mayor asked me to, to kind of explain more about the SUNY event. Uh, all I'll say is it's on their website. <laughs> I, I'm not well-versed enough to, to speak on that. The times that we referenced, I got from their website earlier today. So I know they're doing a recruitment event for like the first hour. They are going to have food trucks. It's all going to be on that ring road. Uh, but, but everything is really laid out on their website, for, uh, Sony, SUNY Fredonia website. They actually have a cool little video, too, on glasses, everything Captain Aldridge just talked about. So uh, I know it's not an answer, but that's going to be the best for them to, to reference their website. I think uh, most of the uh, activity is going to be on the Brigham Road side uh, back there for, for just the folks that are just looking for some place to go and stand or sit or park. But it will be very busy. Are, are, as far as them being overloaded or the security of them? Okay, so yeah, a, a, I'm just going to repeat the question for our, the, those streams. The question was asked about the cell phone towers and a little to explain a little more about that. So uh, again, I don't, I'll give my disclosure, I don't work for the cell phone company, so I'll kind of regurgitate what I'm hearing is, um, it's kind of like when you go to a Bills game, right? You go to a Bills game and you, you can't send a text, you can't receive a phone call. Uh, depends on what cell service you have, but that is a very real uh, concern for the providers, right? 
uh, of the cell phone towers being overwhelmed. Uh, so you might try to make a phone call and you're not going to be able to dial out. You might send a text message just going to say sending. It's not going to get out. If you call 911 from your cell phone, that, and that takes priority. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, but I think it will hit every cell phone tower if you hit 911. It doesn't matter what your provider is. So if you hit 911, it doesn't matter if you have Verizon. If Verizon could be down, but it, AT&T will pick it up or another. So 911, any concerns there? Um, I, I would stray you away from them. You, you definitely have the ability to call 911, but probably won't or we'll see some some delays in sending text messages or phone calls or anything like that. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes. Uh, so thank you on the presentation, the very nice words. Uh, uh, they are doing their own. I know they've done it multiple times. They have an emergency manager over there named Chuck Holder and uh, some, some other professors that are really subject matter experts with stars and skies. Um, so the, I know they've had their own as far as the staff and the students. Um, that answer your question? Great. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions at all? Yes. There, there's a burning ban in effect right now, yes. Um, so the question was, is there a burning ban with all the visitors coming in? Uh, the answer is, the short answer is yes, there's a burning ban every year this, this time of year. Um, that will just be broadcasted through uh, social media, uh, press releases with the paper and radio station to try to educate any visitors to our area. Um, that was not on the slide, but that is a concern as well, right? Any campfires, any barbecues, stuff like that uh, in fields depending on the weather, it could be a dry field. So yes, those are, are things that we are tracking. That's a great question. But yes, if we could remind everyone there is a burn ban in effect. I think that's it. Folks, I know we have a couple of businesses here and um, it's just best, as everybody here said today, you're going to have a tremendous number of people, whether they're staying for the event here or whether they're staying here because it's the closest hotel space to wherever they're going. If you're a business, uh, be prepared. Uh, be open when we're supposed to be open and feel free to close when you're su supposed to close. But there's an opportunity for you to capitalize on this. And it's an opportunity that only comes along once in a lifetime. So I know there are some downtown restaurants and things that are planning some special events. If you have a way that you want to promote your business, please do so. Get us your information too with the, uh, at the village level so that we can help get that word out about who may have think something special going on. And also, uh, while the original distribution points were the fire department, village hall, and the town of Pomfret Hall, um, I dare say that we have enough that if you are a small business in downtown Fredonia and you would like a uh, stack of glasses to be able to give your, uh, your people, your customers, your staff, please see me or uh, Trustee Brockler up in the back of the room as soon as this is done. Or if you can't do it tonight, feel free to give us a call. We'll be happy to drop some off at your business. So uh, good luck to you because we hope that this is a, a big weekend for you. And keep in mind that as all these gentlemen say, it could be anywhere from two days to five days people to be in our community. So hopefully we get a chance to draw them into the downtown core and uh, safely and enjoy your business and enjoy the great hospitality that only the village of Fredonia provides. So did you have anything else, gentlemen? No, that's it. No? We want to thank our police department, our fire department, and also Fredonia State University for, uh, for allowing us to be there as well. As they said, stay home, be safe if you can, enjoy your family time. God bless and thank you for being here tonight. And we want to thank Cable Access for um, streaming this today as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy.